In this lesson, it's going to be colorful. But first, I'd like to show you how to duplicate an artboard. It's fairly easy. If you want to duplicate any item in Studio, just press Command D. If you want to delete an artboard, press Backspace or Delete. Now I want to press A to go to the Artboard tool. By the way, all the tools you will find here in this dropdown. Now if you press A and go to Artboard tool, you have the different presets. But if you don't want to use preset but just uh, freehand draw an artboard, you can do so. Now I want to select this uh, height of uh, our first artboard and press Command A in this field, then copy it and paste this to the width and also height of this artboard. And uh, if you want to go to the second field, to the height field, you simply press Tab, then you press Command V and return to accept it. So now I have the artboard in which I'll have my styles. So let's rename it to Styles. And first, I'd like to move it to the left hand side of this home artboard and use some colors inside. Well, in terms of colors, there are many different tools, and one of my favorite is Colors.co. If you start the generator, you will be able to press spacebar to generate different color schemes. And then if you like any particular color, you can lock it. So let's click on the lock icon and you press the spacebar one more time and again and again until you reach the colors that you like. So if you find any other color useful, you just lock it and you search for the other ones. Now you can tweak the colors with the adjust option. So you can tweak the hue as well as saturation of this color and finally brightness. Also, you can tweak the other color. So let's adjust it and I need more saturation here. And this is how I determine which color to use in my project. Usually three to five colors is enough. If I have those colors, I go back. Now I can use R on the keyboard to um, select the rectangle tool and let's draw a rectangle. By the way, I press shift to hold proportions and it's filled with default uh, gray color, so I can change it. And this hex value can be overwritten with what I have in my clipboard. Or for example, I can just type in the hex value uh, of the color. Now let's duplicate this rectangle with uh, the same command that we used for artboard. So command D, I have another rectangle here and I can move it. If I press and hold shift while moving, I'll lock the Y axis and I'll only move uh, on X axis. So. Uh, now I have another one and I want to paste the color that I already have in my uh, clipboard. So I simply click on this fill and press V. Now I accept it with return and let me have another copy and we'll use another method. If you have anything selected, you can press and hold option to duplicate it. It's as easy as pressing option and simply dragging it out. So I have another instance and for this instance, I want to use the blue color. And this blue color, I also have it in my clipboard. So let me just click on fill and paste it with command V and accept with return. So now I have three base colors for my application. On top of that, I'd like to use some gradients. Let me press R one more time and create a shape like this. Now let's go to fill. And here you have the solid color that's selected by default, but you also can select linear gradient or a radial gradient for a fill. And here you have the image. Let's first use linear gradient. Here I have two color stops. I can click uh, and move between those color stops or I can do it on the artboard itself. Now let's move the first color stop here and the second color stop there. Let's select the first color stop and I already have the color in the clipboard. So let's paste it and accept it. Now let's select another color stop and uh, I also have this copied to my clipboard right now. Now what I'd like to do is add another color stop. So you can do this by clicking on uh, this gradient right here. You have a little plus icon next to the cursor, or you can click anywhere here on this line. So whatever works for you, and if you add the color stop, you can move it around, you can position it somewhere in the middle, and then let's copy and paste the hex value of this violet color. So there we have a gradient. Now, if you want to generate even more colors for your project, let's try this out. I'm going to select this rectangle and duplicate it once more. Now, let's make sure that this rectangle stays on top as well as I'm going to unlock the width and height values and divide the height by three so that I can now expand it and duplicate it with option drag so that I have uh, one rectangle at the top and one on the bottom. The one on the top will have a white fill. And by the way, if you want to have a white fill, you don't necessarily have to circle around here. You can just 
move it like this and move your cursor out even here so that you have a white color. Now you press return to accept it. And I want to change the field's opacity, so let me select both of those rectangles with shift clicked. You can modify those values using the slider, or you can click in the input field and you can type the value manually, or you can use keyboard uh, arrows. If you use down arrow, you decrease it by one, and up arrow will increase it by one. And if you want to uh, use 10 um, percent values, you simply hold shift. So shift and down arrow will decrease it by 10. And here we can go to, for example, 11. Now there is another opacity here, and this is global opacity. This opacity will affect not only the particular field, but also strokes and shadows and inner shadows, everything that you have here. And you can also add some multiple fields and, to, for example, blend some colors with different opacity. Or uh, one way to use it is to use an image as a background and then use, for example, as the top color kind of a gradient and blend them all together. We won't do it right now. So you can either uncheck those colors or you can right click on any of the field and delete it. So let's delete those fields and let me bring fill up to 100%. And again, I need to select both shapes. And you can also use keyboard shortcuts. If you press 1, for example, you'll change this global opacity to 10%. If you press 2 and 3 quickly, you'll see that you have 23%. So you can be even preci more precise. I press 1 to have an uh, opacity of 10%, and now I've created nine different colors in which I have those different shades of the colors that I've already created. So you can advance with that. You can create another rectangle and, for example, do it like this. Instead of having a neutral feel, you can change it so that I can select global colors. We'll be back here in a second and select any of the colors here. And now you can mix and match those colors so that I can use some of this green and some of this blue and use blending modes. If you select blending modes, you can have uh, multiply or overlay or some different mathematical operations calculated on these colors so that the layer that sits on top blends with the layers that are below. So the easiest way to use it is to just use darken. So you have bit of the shade of this color and then it darkens the colors, the layers below, or you can lighten those layers. Then you can manipulate with opacity to experiment with the colors and they will usually match each other. So what I'll do is I use multiply and decrease opacity a little bit. And now, as you can see, I have a bit different hue, but still those colors match each other. Another great keyboard shortcut that you'll use all the time is applying those colors to different shapes. If you have the shape selected, it's as easy as pressing Ctrl C on the keyboard. And now you have a little eyedropper that will let you select any color and click and apply it to the shape. The other method that we'll use is with this color dialog box. Here you have global colors. It means that those are colors available across all your studio documents. You can click and apply those colors. You can reorganize them, or you can right click and delete those colors. Now, instead of global colors, you'll have uh, document colors. So those are colors available only for this particular document and recently used colors. So the next step is adding those colors to the document colors. I'm going to uh, select the eyedropper tool and select the first color and then use this plus icon to add it. Now let's press Ctrl C to select eyedropper once more and select the middle color and add it with plus icon. And this way I'm going to add all those colors to my document colors. You can switch between uh, two modes in order to see that those are separate colors and uh, you can also see the, their hex values as well as you can reorganize them. But if you keep the structure, you always have the main color in the middle, then you have the lighter ve version on the left and the darker version to the right. OK, that's it for this lesson. Oh, by the way, you can't really add those gradient fills uh, to a document gradients or something like this. I think that they will add it very soon in Studio, but for now you can only add solid colors. We'll still leave the styles here because sometimes it's so much better to simply click on the shape and Control C and use one of these colors with uh, eyedropper than to go to fill and selecting those saved colors. But either way will work, so we'll use the different methods. And yeah, I see you in the next lesson.